Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we'll be using Gina's spline system to create realistic roads and paths in our environments. Gina comes with a series of extensions you can use to build out your roads as quickly as possible. The easiest way to create a road is to simply right click on the hierarchy, go to Gina, and then select Add Road Spline. Next, we're going to define our road by creating some nodes. To do this, hold the control key and press the left mouse button to create the node. Let's use the carve extension to create a nice pathway for our road. After we've carved, you may notice some details and trees are laying on top of our roads. To remove them, we're going to start by using the clear details extension to remove the terrain details along our spline. And then we're going to use the clear trees extension to remove the terrain trees along the spline. A really useful feature in creating roads is using Gina's pathfinding system when you create the nodes. Simply create a road spline, open the pathfinding panel, and select enabled before creating your nodes. If you want to spawn things along your road, like streetlights, you can use a genus spawner along your spline. In this case, we'll be using the flooded grounds assets from the asset store. Be sure to install that along with the flooded grounds content pack that comes with Gina, located under procedural worlds, Gina, asset samples, content packs. Simply click and drag the street light spawner into the attach extensions panel in the genus spline. You can then set the flow rate, which is the distance between spawns along the spline. You can then offset the spawns in the X direction along the spline. Once you've spawned the lights, you can then align each of the spawned entities towards the spline. There's various possibilities in what you can make with a powerful system like this. From creating complex road networks in our cities and our other environments, to creating dirt roads and paths in our forests and grasslands. Let's try to create a road from a genus spline. Simply right click on the hierarchy, go to Gina, and then go to add spline. Next, we're going to create our spline nodes by holding the control key and selecting where we want to place our nodes in our environment. Now, we're going to add a road extension to generate a road mesh along the spline. There are numerous properties and settings that we can configure in the road extension to our liking. We can get the road to cast shadows, but in order to set receive shadows, you'll need to set your rendering path to forward. You can adjust the width of the road along the spline. And if we set the rendering mode to shaded wireframe, we can see what happens when we adjust the intersection size property. This allows us to define how detailed our intersection mesh will be generated. We can also adjust our mesh to have either sloped or hard edges along the spline. This can be quite useful depending on the kind of road or path you wish to create. If you are working with multiple terrains, Gina can split the road mesh to fit each terrain tile after you perform a bake road operation. Bake road allows you to set the result of the road mesh down onto the terrain for better performance of your roads. This is useful for when you are using terrain streaming or you wish to bundle each terrain in a separate package or scene. The Add Collider option will get Gina to automatically add a mesh collider to the generated road mesh. Raycast Terrain Only forces Gina to only conform the road to the terrain and not any other objects. You can enable Conform to Ground if you wish to stick the road mesh to the terrain or you can set the ground snap distance to modify how far to snap the road to the terrain. 
The road profile contains all of the properties and settings relating to how the road will render in the scene. Due to the built-in pipeline having limited rendering capabilities, I am using a fresh HDRP project with Gaia installed to see all of the profile settings we have available to use. The first setting we have under the profile settings is the render mode option. By default, this is set to the PW shader, which has a set of values you can play with in order to change the way the road renders. If you wish to learn more about each of these properties, you can select this help option at the top corner of the profile settings to get a better understanding on what each parameter does. You can set up the default custom shaders for your roads and intersections by replacing them in the shader settings here. Next up, we have the albedo settings. Here you can change the image that will be tiled across the spline. You can change the texture on both the road mesh and the intersection mesh independently. You can also change the tint settings if you wish to adjust the color of the road. Here we have the normal settings. This allows you to set up normal maps along your road to affect how the road reacts to the lighting in your scene. Like most of the settings, you can adjust the strength independently for both the road and the intersections mesh. Next, we have the mask map settings. This gives us a few options in modifying finer details of our road. There's a way to make your road appear more metallic. There is an ambient occlusion strength, which gives us nice shaded highlights depending on the applied mask map. We can also adjust the height settings, which affects how the road blends with the objects underneath it. And we have our smoothness for our road, which gives us a more shiny look when the light hits it. Moving right along, here we have our tiling settings. You can adjust the UV tiling of our texture along the spline, and you can also choose not to scale it from the center when tiling your road. Next, we have our edge blending settings. This allows us to modify the distance and contrast of how our road will blend with the objects underneath it. The track pattern settings allow us to control how the mesh will split along the middle of the spline. This is useful for designing dirt roads, train tracks, and other similar kinds of details along our spline. There's a way to control the way the road blends with the objects underneath it, by playing with the height adjustment settings. You can also modify the blending further by playing with the ground blending settings. Use this in conjunction with the height adjustments to give you more fine grain control over the height of the road. The distance offset settings gives you control over how high you want your road to be depending on the camera distance. This is useful in removing any Z fighting artifacts when changing the log levels of your terrain underneath the road. And lastly, we have our noise settings. Here you can add all kinds of uniqueness to your road mesh by introducing different types of noise influence along the spline. Now that we know how to use Gina's road system, let's use some of these tools to create cool looking roads paths, or tracks like these. Before we get started, I'm going to add a new dirt texture to the terrain. Firstly, create a new folder called Terrain Layers. Then, create a new terrain layer for our dirt texture. We're going to be calling this Rocky Ground Layer. The rocky ground textures we'll be using are located in the roads folder located under Procedure Worlds, Gina, Resources, Textures. We'll be using the diffuse texture, the normal map, and the mask map for our dirt texture. Next, let's head over to our terrain to change our terrain layers. Unity only supports a maximum of eight textures on a terrain. Therefore, we'll need to replace one of the textures we aren't using with our new terrain layer that we just created. 
Simply select Add Layer and let's search for our rocky ground layer. Once we've added it to our terrain, we can now use it in our terrain extension for the road. We can set up our terrain extension with a bit more of a shoulder, add a bit of a noise along our shoulder, and then we can paint the texture under the road spline. Now that we've painted a nice dirt texture under the road, let's play around with some of the road settings. I'm going to change the road profile to the rocky profile so that we can blend a dirt road on top of our terrain. All that's left is to play with the road settings to modify how the road blends nicely with the terrain. And that's how you create a nicely integrated dirt road using Gina's road system. More information can be found in Gina's documentation, which is located under Procedure Worlds, Gina, Documentation. If you wish to learn more about Gina or any of our other products, be sure to check out our website at procedural-worlds.com. Thanks for watching.